everyone, I'm Taylor Hudak with Activism Munich and welcome back to another Julian Assange case update. It has been public that while Assange was seeking refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy, he, his legal team and his visitors were all spied on by the Spanish security firm UC Global. What's more, this entire illegal spying operation was conducted at the direction of the CIA. So why is it that this case hasn't been thrown out of court? The very same people who are complicit in his persecution and are behind his prosecution had access to some of his most sensitive communications. Now to further highlight this extensive invasion of privacy and infringement on Assange's right to a fair trial, the Don't Extradite Assange campaign held another Free the Truth event focusing on this very issue. The event featured journalists Max Blumenthal and Stefania Marisi, as well as former Ecuadorian consul Fidel Narvaez, who worked at the embassy. According to Narvaez, when Assange first sought refuge in 2012, there was no security company present to protect the embassy, nor were there any security cameras or guards. However, there was extensive surveillance outside the embassy. Let's uh, remember that the embassy for many years, from the very first day of Julian's asylum, became one of the most surveilled places on earth. British police displayed from first day outside the embassy for many years, police cars, police, police contingent there, with long range microphones trying to listen what was happening inside our embassy with uh, special cameras uh, distributed in surrounding buildings uh, obviously we needed protection. Narvaez said that at the time Ecuador did not have the resources to protect the London embassy and in the past Ecuadorian intel services have been infiltrated by U.S. agents which would pose other risks. UC Global was then chosen to protect the embassy, including its staff and, of course, Assange. Unfortunately, UC Global and its owner, David Morales, became completely compromised. And to add to this, those behind the spying operation then used the opportunity to create a misinformation and smear campaign. In order to carry over the persecution of Julian Assange, it was not only the spying is the defamation, the misinformation, yeah, which is done by also small fishes and big fishes. All this nonsense, complete rubbish about the insights of the embassy, about the supposed misbehavior of Julian Assange, about the supposed conflicts between uh, the embassy staff and Julian Assange and the discomfort of the Ecuadorian diplomats with Julian Assange is only based in the reports of the complete corrupt UCA global company, which we know. We know because their own employees who have come out and denounced the crimes and the spying against Julian, recognize that they deliberately lie, exaggerate, misrepresent, and fabricated events and activities inside the embassy in order to kill Julian Assange's reputation. Recent investigation by the Gray Zone, which we covered in a previous report, provided more details on the extent in which U.S. intelligence was involved in this spying scandal. And it also indicated just how far the Americans would go to prevent Assange from leaving the embassy under diplomatic immunity. The Gray Zone's Max Blumenthal conducted this investigation into UC Global, exposing its ties to U.S. intelligence via Sheldon Adelson's company, the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Blumenthal provided his insight into the nature of the relationship between American intelligence and UC Global. But everything that UC Global did in, in, in every capacity was just following orders. Um, they were just taking instructions and um, it's, there's an important detail 
in my piece uh, where the former business partner describes his confrontations with David Morales and says, you know, um, what you're doing is, is, is working for the enemy. This is illegal and so on. You're violating our contract with the Ecuadorian government. And Morales would um, rip open his shirt sometimes and puff out his chest and declare, I am a wholehearted mercenary. So a wholehearted mercenary would not really have any ideological conviction to take down WikiLeaks or Assange. He's just following orders. My point here is that if there's an assassination plan put forward or a kidnapping plan put forward, we should expect that it's being put forward by Washington or more specifically by Langley, by the CIA. It was revealed during the hearings back in February that the U.S. did in fact plot to assassinate Assange or kidnap him in the embassy. Few corporate media organizations even covered this, and it's perhaps why such abuses of power continue to go unnoticed or without consequence. The important thing about Mark's investigation is that we are discovering or we are getting to the bigger criminals, to the masters of this whole thing, yeah? Which is not Mr. Adelson. Mr. Adelson is a medium-sized fish. Yeah, yeah. The bigger fish in this is Mr. Pompeo. Yeah. Yeah? And is he gonna be accountable for that? I don't know. But the consequence of his activity is the danger precedent for not just an individual, Julian Assange, and the rest of his life in prison, but as a precedent for freedom of expression and for the journalism all over the world. In light of this ongoing persecution, supporters are continuing to take to the streets to peacefully demonstrate their support for Assange. On Saturday, the organizations Committee to Defend Julian Assange and Candles for Assange held demonstrations in central London and outside Belmarsh Prison. Free Julian Assange! Free Julian Assange! US, UK! Hands off Assange! The committee to defend Julian Assange provided activists in Munich with a statement which in part said, the U.S. extradition request must be resisted. Each of us individually and all together will continue our solidarity and urge the public to join our efforts. To learn more about the committee, you can follow it on Twitter at JA underscore defense. And for more information about the online events, do visit don'textraditeassange.com. Assange remains in London's Belmarsh prison and is being held on remand without charge and is in his cell for 23 hours a day and does not even have a radio. The next hearing is scheduled for June 29th. I, of course, will cover this hearing and provide you all with everything that you need to know as this case moves forward. So do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you are new here or you've missed an update, you can find my previous reports on the playlist Julian Assange Case Updates. I'm Taylor Hudak with Activism Munich. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.